your first reaction when Eddie asked you about appearing on the KSI Logan Paul bill? And did you know who those guys were? Yeah, uh, I knew who they were from from the last fight that they did. I didn't I didn't get a chance to watch the last fight, but I knew who they were, and I knew that the numbers that they generated. And the, how, how much buzz that they got on the last fight. So I was with it, you know, right when he brought it to me. You said you saw flaws in Lomachenko's performance against Campbell. Can you highlight those flaws for us? When we fight, I'll, I'll, I'll show you all the flaws. All the flaws. When are you going to fight in London? Uh, 2020, I'm going to be back in London. I'm going to fight here. Uh, hopefully against Luke Campbell. If it's not Luke Campbell, then, uh, you know, it's going to be someone else. But more than likely, 2020, I'll be back to fight Luke Campbell. Just tell us a little about you not being able to go to the Olympics because of your age at the time and being a precocious talent. Yeah, um, right, like, like maybe like two years before the Olympics they changed the age to uh, age 19. I was, I would have been 17 around the Olympics, you know, I, like like the la previous Olympics I would have been able to participate if they didn't change the age on it when they took it, the head gear off. But uh, it's alright, um, I'm okay with that, I'm happy with the way that my career has went so far, so I'm okay with not going to the Olympics. If you can map out your 2023 fights, 2023 fights. Uh, Luke Campbell, uh, Ryan Garcia, and Lomachenko. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was, those are like three fights who fans would, would, would love to see. When you were growing up, who were your main inspirations, both inside boxing and outside? Uh, I like. I watched a lot of Floyd. Uh, his Floyd. Floyd was somebody that you know was like who was there. Somebody I can touch. Somebody I can learn from. Somebody who was like literally right there. So uh, he's he's had a big influence in my career. And outside of boxing. Outside of boxing. Uh, but that's a boxer. Like outside of boxing. Just anyone outside of boxing oh, that inspired uh, uh, you as a my, kid. My dad. You know. Uh, he. He, um, he taught me so much. He taught me so much about the business of boxing, you know, in and out of the ring. And without him, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. People always allude to that you're only 20 years old, but because you started so early, are you more experienced and people give you credit for it? Yeah, definitely. And, and that's why I feel like people, they label me as, as a prospect because of my age, but they don't see, they're, they're not labeling, labeling me as, as a contender because they're, they're, they're not looking at, at you know, where I'm at. Now. I'm the number one contender. Yeah, mandatory for Lomachenko, Chico, they're not looking at that. They're only looking at me as a prospect because of my age. What uh, what led to you first getting through? What facts? Uh, pretty much, I sparred on my first day at a, uh, at the age of seven. I went to the gym. Uh, my dad took me to the gym because I was fighting a lot in school. I was having a lot of problems. Just you know, I was I, on, on on the outside, and uh, my dad said, you know what, you like to fight a lot. I'm gonna take you to the gym, and I'm, you're gonna fight somebody that really knows how to fight. And every time that you keep fighting at school. I'm gonna keep bringing you back to the gym. Keep bringing you back. And on my first day, uh, uh, I went to I went to the gym and they put me in there to spar. Uh, and I went in there and I sparred. Uh, a kick. He was a kickboxer, but he's working on his stand up. And, uh, and when I hit him, I knocked him out of his shoes. <laughs> he, he, no, literally, I knocked him out of his shoes. See, I don't like some, uh, some Velcro type shoes. And he went out. <laughs> Devin, I heard you on the um, Toe to Toe podcast yesterday and you had a bit of a, a friendly debate with um, Andy on there about the ratings. Where would you rate yourself lightweight right now? As, as of what? As, yeah, as in like the top 10 rankings. I know you weren't happy where they put you on the Sky Sports ranking, but where would you rate yourself? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll put Chico number one, I'll put Richard Comey number two, and I'll put myself number three. And I'll put those guys ahead of me just because they, they have the belt. Devin, in the past it was sort of, it's been said many times that the um, Americans see the British fighters as perhaps an easy touch. Do you think that sort of scene's changing up? No, I, I don't believe that. I think it's, it's great fighters all over the world. You know, um, it, it, it is really, you know, it depends on the fighter. But uh, it's, it's, it's a great boxer that's coming to come the UK. Right now I like, uh, I like Josh Kelly and I like Josh Taylor. Those, those are my two favorites. Do you think Taylor beats Pro? Uh, I think that that's a tough fight. I think that that's a really tough fight. Um, Pro Grace is strong. He has a lot of confidence. He's going in there to win. Um, Josh Taylor is a good boxer and he's a southpaw. So uh, I don't know. Maybe best man win. You're getting a lot of comparisons of Floyd Mayweather. If you have to like him, you're starting to one I like Roy Jones. I like Roy Jones a lot. I like Floyd. That's, I mean, it's great to be compared to Floyd. You know, Floyd is hard to beat him. He's the face of boxing, so of course you know that's great, but I like I like Roy Jones.
Eddie, you were looking for that big American superstar. Did you like your body in Yeah, we've got it. There's still work to do. You know, but what we have is we have the basis of the next American superstar in boxing. And sometimes you need to make sure that that fighter's got the work ethic and the drive to get there. And that's why I'm so comfortable with Devin and Bill because there's no one going to stop him. The only person who can stop him is himself and he won't allow that to happen. You know, he's 20 years old living in Vegas. Like, what would we be doing if we were 20 years old living in Vegas, you know? Not doing what Devin Haney's doing, which is getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning and running 10, 15 miles. So his discipline's unbelievable. And sometimes you've got to check that he's 23 and 0, 20 years of age, WBC interim world champion, about to become WBC lightweight world champion. But I believe the first of five weight class world championships. I believe he's that good. And he's got that kind of drive where he's, he's the kind of individual where when he wins a world title, he won't be satisfied. He's got, always got to push himself, whether that's unifying the championships, whether that's moving up a weight class, you know. And when we talk about our business in America, from a selfish point of view, you need the top, top talent. You need the future. And I believe that the biggest, you know, and the best future of American boxing is with Devin Haney. And actually, global boxing. I mean, look at this turnout here today. It's incredible. You know, he's, he's from Vegas. He's come to London. He's only just starting his career. And this is a bigger turnout than I've seen from a lot of British world champions. So you guys are behind it. The hype is real. And there is a lot of hype, and he's got to justify the hype, but we're going to enjoy watching him do that. Devin, what's the other side of that coin? Why, what made you sign with Match from USA? I mean, I'm sure you had a lot of competition. Yeah, um, I, I basically had, had a contract from every top promoter, but what, what I saw, Eddie, Eddie saw, Eddie saw my vision, you know, he was willing to, you know, co-promote with me and, and work with me, and, and he, um, and with some other terms that he, that he was willing to, to, to work with, and uh, what, what better man to work with, you know, uh, he, he's, so far, you know, he's been everything that, that, that he said, uh, that he said he would be, and uh, everything is going great. Eddie, can I put you on the spot and say, out of all of the young fighters you've got in America and Britain, is he your most prized possession for yeah, I mean, certainly in America, you know, I think that we've got some amazing talent, but our talent in America is really the established world champions and the young kids coming out. Coming out. I mean, a lot of guys that Devin knows, you know, Nikita Rabavi, you know, Amo Williams, Reshat Matty, you know, uh, Oprah Jones, you know, these kind of guys, Raymond Floyd. Um, but Devin's already there, you know, he's effectively an interim world champion. So he's kind of like already established as a star, but we've still got a long way to go. Um, but you know, I think when you talk about, you know, show me other potential superstars in the sport of boxing in America. You know, Devin Haney, uh, Javonta Davis, who's you know probably one step ahead in terms of commercial draws. Ryan Garcia, uh, Virgil Ortiz. You know, these guys and, and every promotional outfit has got the guy, and Devin is our guy in that position, ready to take over. Devin, I know you sparred with Ricky Burns yesterday. Who's the best British fighter you sparred with, and is there many? Uh, let me see. Oh no, I haven't really sparred with many. Uh, yeah, I can't think of many that uh, that I that I sparred with. There's this one dude going around named uh, Joseph some some shit, Joseph Laws or some shit like that. Talking, Joe Laws. He's talking about Lawsy. Yeah, he's talking about Newcastle. Joe. You the Ben Well Bomber. Hold on, I just gotta I just gotta clear this up. He's going around saying that he that he beat me up in sparring or some something. I don't know what he's saying. He, he posted like a little snippet of a like a three second clip that he, I don't know, but uh, he's going around saying that he got the best of me in sparring, which is a lie. So, so whenever y'all see him, tell him that he's a liar. <laughs> Is there any rivalry between you and Ryan Garcia? We know in that match, you're 3-3 at the moment. Um, is there any sort of rivalry? Yeah, it's a rivalry. I don't like him. I don't like him. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I, 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 I like Ryan. I like what he's doing. Uh, like, like I said, I'm, hopefully we can make that fight in 2020, 2020-2021. You know, coming out of the amateurs, we, we we tied it. So in the pros, we gotta you know we we we, we gotta break that. Any thoughts on that fight? It's a mega fight, mega fight. Bill, Bill and Devin want that fight now. You know, and I'd be willing to make that fight first fight off the bat in 2020. But I don't know whether Ryan, Ryan, not that Ryan's afraid, but sometimes promoters like to build. You said that. <laughs> like to build, build an asset that they've got, but I believe the asset that we've got beats him. So I'm willing. If I didn't, I wouldn't want to make that fight now. I'd be saying, no, nah, yeah, that, we can we can build that fight. But really, I'm that confident. Let's let's do it first fight in 2000, uh, 2020. The zone love that fight. 
loved. I mean, we was with him this morning, you know, loved that fight. And it's a mega fight for boxing. But I will be honest, it does get bigger and bigger and bigger. But I think 2020 is the perfect time, and it would be for a world title, I believe.